when you review the return, mm -hmm. right? You look, there is no audit. Let's say if I receive a return yeah. and I need to review it. That's right? the first thing you look at is the audits. Okay, and then what else? Well, then I, uh, I'm gonna go over that in a second, okay. but I'm gonna go through kind of my, yeah. my standard things here. Um, so the first, basically the info page. So you, you know, you picked up uh, the email and uh, get everything by electronic mail, okay? Also the pre-assessment, post-assessment, and then you can tell what we're gonna do is we'll develop questions, a template uh, for each taxpayer. So there's a number of questions that we need to ask. Um, is this, uh, you know, d down here, okay, hold on up here. So did you dispose of property, the principal residence is one, but the other one is, um, did you own this one here? It's very important, 100,000, do you have uh, for foreign income? A lot of people miss this one, uh, especially if you have like uh, people that go to Florida all the time snowbirds i just did a blog on it and uh, they don't know that they're what they'll do is they'll airbnb and rent out their their property during the uh, winter of when they're not using it that income is all taxable you're, you're taxable and this is what this is meant to catch mm -hmm. it's not only meant to catch that but it's meant it it's used to basically criminally charge people because what happens is if you're some high flyer and you've got it in the bahamas and you're, you're dodging taxes, millions of dollars, you still have to, you have to answer this question, right? So if you got millions of dollars in the Bahamas and you answer no, no. here, that's a criminal offense. That's mm -hmm. indictable, right? Mm -hmm. So you can be prosecuted and spend up to 14 years in prison for that. So that's, 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 that's what this person. question is trying to catch you 14 on. 14 right? years? 14 years, wow. right? Um, is taxpayers income zero again you got to understand why they're asking you these questions right because if you answer yes or no to this it's not like you never uh, like say you you filed a nil return you have to answer this question because you've answered this question if you lie on a tax return it's a criminal offense mm -hmm. so you got to be careful any question that you answer and even though we prepare the return it's prepared on the taxpayer's behalf, and the taxpayer is liable for everything that's in that return. So that's why they signed the T-183. Now you understand the ramifications of having those signatures and why the T-183 is so important, right? Um, again, these questions, mentally or physically infirm. Indian with the meaning of the Indian Act. They're very specific questions because they are trying to trip you up, and you can't claim to be you know, if, if you are designated as an Indian under the Act, um, there's actually, uh, it will show up on your T4. There's little tricks for that, right? Because you don't pay tax if you're a, a Native yeah. Indian, right? So, but they're asking you this question. And so if you aren't a Native Indian and you're answering yes, it's a criminal offense, right? Because it, now you're trying to dodge, not only are you dodging taxes, but you're, you're uh, lying on a federal document. Um, see, this this is another uh, question. This is you, you'll rarely come up against this, but this is for deceased returns. Um, I'll explain that later. There's a number of things when someone dies. There's a number of returns that you have to file. One is a final return. One is a rights and things return, and then your actual normal income tax return. So it's, it's a bit uh, involved, but I'll go through in another video with that, right? Uh, authorization, all this stuff, is this an amended return to refile? This is in case you make a mistake or something and you just want to refile it like the next day or something, you had the wrong address or whatever, you can do it right here and actually refile. Authorization for e-filer to represent it. You don't have to click yes here, you can click uh, uh, you know what I, actually in this I always like to click yes okay mm -hmm. just so that you always have the authorization on there mm -hmm. even though even though you most cases you've already got the authorization on um, again these these will come up at some point is return discounted 
right now it's always going to be no, but I'm considering doing that in the future. Um, and it's what discounting is, is I can actually say you have a refund. I can actually say it's $100. I can actually discount it for you, give you $80 and take a $20 discounted fee for doing the return. But I'm not doing that. That's what H&R Block does, right? Um, but the big game with that is, you know, why would you do that when you're going to get your money in your account in like almost three days or something? Like it's it's absurd. What you know, people are so desperate for money they do this, right? Um, there's a fee charge for preparing this tax return. Again, always click yes here because I always uh, you know charge a fee even if I don't, ch unless I don't charge a fee. That's a good point. Then you would go. In, sometimes I do a pro yeah, bono, honest, yeah. and then so you put no, right? But again, they're trying to trip me up here. They're trying to trip me up, right? Mm -hmm. Because now they want to make sure that I report the income. Mm -hmm. Where you can find to a prison, and all that's pretty obvious stuff. They they put that in after a number of years back. They were giving prisoners refunds, mm -hmm. and then they were going out and buying drugs. So that they put this in here. It it just shows you how how like not sophisticated the system is they need to put in certain questions because you know uh, again it's used in court right if you answer no to this and you were actually in prison you're in big trouble because you just got out of prison you're going back into prison right is the home address the same as the mailing address another question to trip you up because you know the criminals like to do this they, they get a hold of people's addresses and they steal their returns and then they'll go and change the address and apply for a refund and then go cash the check. So that's why this is on here, right? Um, spousal information, all this is pretty straightforward. Prepare, always gonna be uh, you know my name and the, the firm name, tax mechanic, so that anybody from, because we'll have a group ID so that anybody can uh, from the tax mechanic can, can you know, uh, inquire about the t this tax return, right? Rep ID uh, and group ID. So, you know, these are, this identifies me, this identifies the tax mechanic. And these are, what they do is they audit me every year and just before tax season. And basically what they say is they'll, they'll just send me a quick little email and I'll say, give me the, the T183s for these five taxpayers last year. And if I don't produce it like within the next, you know, that day, uh, I'll get a call. And uh, I've been suspended before for not providing all the information. So it's a real pain in the neck. So that's why T183s, 1013s are very important to get signed. However, the caveat is now with COVID-19 is, is gonna be, there's gonna be some leniency here. So it's not gonna be that big of an issue this year. But if you can get the signatures, right? Mm -hmm. Discounter information, so we're not doing that yet, but we're, we're looking to do that. Um, and trustee information, this is used for when, you know, if you're a loser and you go bankrupt. So we don't have any loser clients. We don't accept them. Um, T1. T1, so this is uh, up here, you can go to. Okay, so. T1 jacket. Why do they call it the jacket? God only knows. So when you look at the jacket, this is basically what the paper return would look like, right? And again, do you have citizenship? All these questions you need to answer. Um, I always say yes to uh, Elections Canada because it's your civic duty. Um, Indian Act, again, very important because you be exempt from income foreign property, they're trying to catch you, and see if yes. See, this is very important here too, um, because what they're saying here is, if yes, you have foreign property, then you're to complete the T1135 for foreign income, a verification statement. So now you're supposed to report your income, and on that statement, you have to tell what assets you have offshore. And if you lie on that, prison. Right, so that's a that's a big one. And what I offer people is, hey, you may have forgotten, or you may not even have known. So if you want to fix an old problem, you do a VDP, mm -hmm. and then you don't get prosecuted, but you just have to pay the tax on it. And what I would do is I just do I file the T1135 uh, 
subsequently. Yeah, you did video with it. Yeah. 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 Okay, total income. Yeah, these things are all, um, you know, it, it's cut up into sections here. So you've got all your, this is the income section. And, you know, you'll see the things like support payments, rental income, T4 income, pension income, um, business, and now you get into the business professional commission income, gross, net, and social assistance payments. And then that comes up to your total net income. And then from there, you can get certain various adjustments, you know, pension adjustment on your T4s, um, split pension, annual, now you can get into other deductions, union dues, universal child care tax benefit repayment, child care expenses. So again, we need to, these will be questions that we should put on our template is, you know, do you pay union dues? Do you pay, another one is, there's other, a lot of common uh, deductions that people miss is like um, uh, safety deposit box at the bank. You know, there's certain bank fees that you're allowed to deduct. Even if you have, uh, uh, you know, you got to understand too that, uh, say, even yourself, if you've got a line of credit at home and you're working for the tax mechanic, you work at home sometimes, and especially now you're working remotely in that, uh, some of that interest is deductible. Some of your home office expenses is deductible. That's a whole other, especially now with COVID-19, whole other thing, right? Even with T4s, right? Uh, even with T4s, um, and I'll, we're going to do a separate video on that because, especially for COVID-19, because there's a lot of issues with it, right? And what constitutes as, as deductible income or deductible expenses? A lot of people, you, you saw me do that video before too. We did a short one, but we'll do, you know, we'll do this. We'll get into that a little bit more, especially with COVID-19 as as tax season comes up. Um, Business invest moving expenses. Another typical question, you know, if somebody's, you got to keep these things in mind. For you, the, the whole thing with tax is issue recognition. That's all I'm good at. I can just tell you what the issues are. Now, so what I'm always, when I'm thinking, I'm always thinking, what are the issues? I don't really think of what's taxable and what's deductible. I just think of, okay, moving expenses. Oh, if you moved, okay, there is an issue there. And we have to resolve that. You have to file your moving expenses and how far, and there's rules for it and everything. But you got to be able to see the issue, right? If you have somebody who has kids, right? What are the issues? Well, they got, you know, childcare expenses. They've got um, how old are they? You know, it affects their benefits. They got child tax benefits. So you got to recognize that the, there's those issues. And before you do that, you need to, to, to you know identify the issues so you know in your intake form you know our intake form doesn't have a lot of these questions and we don't even have a, a form that you know the big firms do they send out like a stupid long form where nobody reads it right yeah, but you got to have like kind of a you know a nice one nice one pager where obvious things get but also you want a form for us that we check ourselves because when you talk to the client or email Oh, by the way, uh, you know, I noticed you have kids. Uh, got any, uh, you know, uh, extracurricular caregiving expenses or whatever? So you got to be able to check those boxes too for the reviewer, because then now I'm going to look at it and go, okay, they got kids. Did you ask if they got childcare expenses? Check, right? Caring charges and interest expenses here is a huge one that people don't. There's a worksheet for this, and it's one that uh, I was talking about before. This is where I put in a lot of stuff that uh, I like to, you know, if I want to minimize tax, right? So accounting fees is a big one, right? You can put in your uh, my fee, uh, management or safe, uh, or safe custody fees, investment counseling fees, uh, legal fees paid to collect, establish, or increase the amount of support payments. See, there's a lot of carrying charges and interest, a lot of expenses that people don't know about. Um, they can get there, and again, it's, it's issue recognition. I'll, I'll get into that more um, as we go along. Uh, let's see. So back to the jacket. So, so the jacket. So now we get to taxable income. From taxable income, um, you're going to have your deductions. So you're going to have various things like, you know, non-capital losses from previous years, and these things are called continuity schedules. 
So meaning, you know, software is pretty sophisticated. Once you fill this out and you have a loss, say this year, it will automatically carry it forward to the next year. So these numbers will jump up. Once you see these, then you want to start analyzing and go, okay, do I have all the losses, right? Northern residence deductions. This is another one, issue recognition, because it's been an issue, right? Like if you are qualified for that, then you've got to fill this out. But it's a pain in the neck thing, right? Like you got to make sure that you qualify, because they, they will, there's certain things Revenue Canada that causes a red flag. That's one of them. They, they will check that every time. Another one is if your auto expenses are too high. You know, another one is if you claim rental losses three years in a row, automatic audit. So people don't, you know, people don't know about that and, uh, you know, until the audit happens and then they call the tax mechanic. <laughs> Federal uh, basic personal amount, okay, these things are all supposed common law, caregiver, eligible, dependent, all these are pretty straightforward, employment insurance premiums, adoption expenses, pension income, all pretty tuition. Tuition is, you know, uh, very particular, so you got to get the T2200, uh, 2202, and uh, that's issued by the Institute. So that's something, as soon as you see that they got tuition, you got to ask the client to get that slip, because you can't get it yourself, the student has to get it. And then it becomes, there's a whole issue with uh, tuition, so the child can use the credit, but usually the parent is paying for the education, so you can transfer to the parent, and so, but the, the child has got to give consent for that. So, uh, you know, and then you can get into interesting conversations with children and parents. Like, you know, it's like, oh, wait a minute, I, get, I, get, I paid for it and all this stuff, right? So it's medical expenses. I almost never, you can ask, uh, you can ask for this, but you have to keep in mind, it's, it's, it has to be, uh, there's a threshold amount of 3% of your, your income. So normally, if you've got medical expenses that are more than 3%, you're probably comatose in a hospital or something, or you should be buried or something. Right? So only 3% not 5%. High, yeah, high yeah it's expenses. really high, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're that sick, then you know, just go ahead and die already. Right? Please, dear. Please. <laughs> All right. Uh, edit that out of the video. Always amount of medical expenses. <laughs> Uh, federal non-taxable. Okay. So this is where you get your. Uh, then you just calculate your your taxes owing. So I, I can book more than three percent of the income. income. No, you for my income here. Yeah. No, you have to. Your expenses have to be more than three percent for it to to be deductible. Okay. Up to three percent is not deductible. Okay. In the medical, so what about yeah. when they send you prescriptions for forty dollar for sixty dollar, and they want you to put it there? It's you a put waste it there, of time. But as soon as you see that, you just go. Listen, make you, you just you just say you, you don't qualify. Okay, so you just don't because yeah. if you put it there, it still doesn't make any. Doesn't difference. make any difference. You're just wasting your time. The biggest thing about doing the tax returns is what you got to understand is that you know, Tim Weir, love them whatever right but he has he does it a long way and what he's doing is because he does a lot of things certain people need to see and do things a certain way visual and they get comfort zones right so he puts everything on an excel sheet you don't need to do that you right? go straight here you can go straight into here and that's what you got to get used to is if you're doing something touching it twice you're taking twice as long to do it you should as soon as you get something you should put it in and it should be done and if you have to put it here and then put it here and put it here, you're gonna get, it, it's taking too long, right? Um, so. But I think the reason for Excel sheet was if you need to review this one, you review it with us in an Excel sheet. That's okay. why we put. Okay, you're arguing with me now? Hmm? Is that what you're doing? Then we'll, we'll have a different video for that, okay? <laughs> okay. All right. Round one. <laughs> All right, so. It is a serious offense to make a false return. Mm. So I would say it is, because it's maximum 14 years in prison. And if you don't think that uh, people go to prison in Canada, this is a common mistake. If you don't think they do, then I invite you to read uh, enforcement actions on Revenue Canada's website and to come back and tell me that people don't go to prison. 
because they do enforcement action. Yeah. Okay. But there are cases there. Yep. That's yeah. be fun. And they give you usually it's the dentist. So I don't know what's wrong with dentists, but they they, <laughs> they just completely like just heat pain tact or something. I don't know what their problem is. Um, okay. Other things I like to this is today it's just going to be the T1, mm -hmm. but I'm just going to go over a couple of other mm -hmm. things on the, the, the you know all these things here. What you should be doing is um, you know play around with it. Uh, understand what all these all these things are all these functions are because there's a number of functions I basically know what they all are a lot of them are look okay, you got autofill my return you can you know basically autofill it go in the revenue can and they put the t4s and everything t5s but keep in mind when you do that it doesn't mean it's right, right? you still have to check it right right um, could be and there can be some things what can happen is say a company um, issues a T4 to you, but they didn't report it to Revenue Canada. That happens a lot. I'm so you, now you don't have it when you ought to fill. You don't have it from, but the person is giving it to you. It's giving it to you. So you use. You got to use that. Now it's the company's fault for not using it. it causes a problem, right? So we have to ask the client if he has a T4. If he gets T4, uh, no, you don't. You, mm -hmm. you don't have to ask them. Um, they want to come. They want to tell you. No, but yeah. If he didn't tell me, and I check because we. Most of time, you take his same number and do check CRA. Okay. Yeah. And do get no, the here's what you do on the intake form. A couple of things you need to understand. This is another thing that Tan Weir doesn't do very well. Okay, but it's an English thing, right? Is it one of the first things you need to understand when you're doing a tax return? Is it's called knowledge of the client, right? So you need to know certain things about the client. One is what do you do? That is a huge one, right? Mm -hmm. If you're Tanware will, 70% uh, of the returns he does, he has no, no idea, idea what they do, right? So the problem with that is if you, you know, you know if you're a computer technician, um, you know, you may have home office expenses. You may, so it indicates a whole bunch of things to me, right? If you're married, now you got kids, you got tuition, you got how old are the kids? Oh, they're of, they're, they could be going to university. Okay, there's, there could be tuition. So there's, you need that knowledge, right? Um, if they're a salesman, then they got uh, auto expenses. They drive around to clients and that. And you need a 2200 from the client. So this kicks out another number of questions. What if the guy is, uh, you know, you find out, uh, you know, he's a, you know, a school teacher, but he's doing internet business uh, on the side. Well, now he's got a sole proprietor and also home office expenses. So it's important to know all those things, right? Um, get to know your client. Like, understand who are they? How old are they? Even even nationality, even a little bit about, you know, anything, even personal stuff, make notes about it on Trello because it's it's funny how these notes, like if I know, say, the guy's, uh, you know, an Egyptian player, maybe he's uh, traveling to Egypt or something and, uh, you know, maybe he did that for business or something, but these things can all link in, right? Um, so anyway, have a look at all these and, and then, you know, there's a lot of stuff on uh, there's profile help on their site it's very good and then you can go on here user guide uh, and then there's the live community you can even go in there and the thing about tax is it's like working out right you have to do it every day if you don't uh, you get behind and you lose things right and that's why I say what you got to do is make notes on your Trello board call it tax and I will review those notes and I'll see what notes you made. And then there's going to be certain things. What I tell people is when I review a file, you know, if I tell you once, that's okay. But if I tell you the same thing more than once, then it's like I know that you're not paying attention or you're not making you notes. You didn't get it. Yeah. Or you didn't get <laughs> it, right? And the audits, so right now, one, I can tell you right, you know, listen, I'm, I'm pretty easy going. But I tell you, the first thing I'll look at is the audits. And if there's an audit question there, don't even bring it to me. Figure it out, figure out how to get rid of it because I will get rid of it. And it, you can even ask me directly, hey, how do I get rid of this stupid audit? And it can be, you can do things like, you know, override, see up here, you can, uh,
Okay, it depends where. Okay, if you're in, you got to be in a number or something. See, in each one, you can make, you can put reviewer marks. So, mm -hmm. like, say, say there's something wrong with it, you can put, you can put a remark in there, and even make a comment mm -hmm. for me. Now, at least if you've got a comment, I, I can clear it off. I can, like, you could say, what am I supposed to do with this? Or this amount seems too high, or whatever it is, right? Um, you can attach a hyper document. You can paste a memo or a tape or attach a memo. So there's lots of things you can do here and show the auditor environment. Lots. That, these are for more sophisticated things. See, this is what happens with the big firm, but we're kind of getting there. Is that you got to appreciate that I'm seeing a lot of returns. So when I see the, one of the first things, I, I, I basically look, I'll see on 10 words right now, I'll, I'll look see that there's no audits. Then I'll see if there's a refund or payable situation. Because the other thing too is because we do previous years a lot, um, is some people don't think they need a VDP. But what will happen is, and they have T4s, but they may owe, say they owe for a previous year, and it should be a trigger too, you should do a VDP. Otherwise you're gonna pay double, right? So those things, that's what I look for when I when I see that. Um, let me see what, if there's anything interesting over here. Okay, this is all the edit parts that I was just talking about. Uh, you should look in the file too when we, properties. So this is, you know, this is basically what your, the properties of the T1 file. So this one's in progress right now, you file status. Send status is not important because that's for the discounting, but these two are important. So once it's complete, you know, or it could be in prepare or review, you can, you know, modify these, oh, right? Um, TP, you don't need this. But here, this shows uh, the prepare, so, and then it shows where, where the file is. Yeah, where the right? to be. And we're going to have to, we're going to move to a system where we're going to be saving these on Dropbox. So, um, Dropbox. Yeah, it'll be. Uh, we just have to figure out how we're going to do. Well, I just haven't set it up yet. Um, so audit. So now question. Mm -hmm. We had a case of a client like that the problem was when it was out of field 2016, yeah, yeah. it downloaded the credits from mm -hmm. CRA. Mm -hmm. And then when you carry forward, it carry forward the same credits. So he actually applied it to every year. So the same credits were used on all the years. Mm -hmm. So once you have something like that, you need to make sure that you're when you carry forward, not that you when you have credits that you're not reusing them, right? Because the carry forward it will pass everything to the next year, right? Um, yeah. The uh, you know Revenue Canada assesses returns independently, so carry forward numbers can be wrong with Revenue Canada regularly, right? So you got to think of what the over, the override is this, right? We are right all the time. We are never wrong. Okay. okay. So. Um, but where do we have to look? Like we need to make sure because we put it carry depends forward where, and we start the next year, so not to enter no, all the put, information, you right? Put, um, so that is something that we need to keep in yeah, mind, right? We'll, yeah. Well, the carry forwards you have to confirm the so opening carry forwards. But that can be a whole different discussion because, say RSPs, for example, mm -hmm. um, we, I will have the right number, okay? I don't care what Revenue Canada says, I got the right number. Now, if Revenue Canada is different, then I can go in and analyze mine, but it'll be because they haven't recorded uh, an entry or something, or they haven't processed everything, right? Um, see, the thing is, a lot with those carry-forward numbers, I've processed everything. So I've got the, the right, and the, every number is carried forward from one year to the next. What they, they may not have processed, say, they may not have assessed a previous year. If they don't assess a previous year, then the carry forward numbers just skip the year. So that's why their numbers are different. So okay. that's why you have to be careful with, um, you know, relying on numbers. But you can rely on my numbers, because once I bless it, it is right, right? Because I make sure that those carry forward, everything is is meant that way. 
and I don't go by Revenue Canada unless, um, well, I will go by Revenue Canada if I think their number is right and overriding something on this, but, but I check that, right? Okay. Um, let's go for But that is an, a typical mistake when you carry forward, right? Like it's an, it's an easy mistake to do, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. There's, uh, well, RSPs are always a problem, and uh, the other one is home buyer's plan. Um, because uh, you got to appreciate the, the, the algorithm. They don't know uh, if you've, again, if they haven't at, assessed all the years. Because every year you're required to take a certain amount of the home buyer's plan in. And, th you know, my software knows that and does that. But Revenue Canada may not have assessed certain years, right? So that's why the numbers will be different. Um, okay, form, you got the spouse options. Uh, this stuff is really uh, not that important though, but you could go in and have a look at the environment. E-file, you know, these things, you guys know enough for this, for the, you know, e-filing the return. And this is the, the foreign income, and then for your authorization. Online, um, just to check, uh, you know, Intuit Canada and stuff. There's lots of good stuff on there. Training, again, lots of good stuff. It's, it's good to go through that stuff, right? Uh, window uh, this is just for like you know if you have more than one return open and then help start messaging and so what I'm gonna do is we'll do this again say next Thursday and next Thursday we're gonna do T2 okay you don't need to study anything on it but what I'm gonna do is before next Thursday I'm going to review your notes on T1 and then you can put in whatever notes you got from today watch this video again and what you what I want to see is questions, right? So give me some questions. What questions do you have about T1s, uh, various expenses or whatever? Because there, it's always good to have those questions, and then you answer them. There's going to be when you're doing returns, you're going to these questions are going to pop up, right? Oh, I'm doing uh, home, home, home buyer's plan. I know you guys were talking, but I'm confused. How does this work? You know, the carry forward is this and that. And how much am I supposed to take in each year? Put, put that question into the trouble. And then, so what I'm going to do is I'll look at your questions. I'll start off with those questions, and then I'll go, go into T2. T2 is for corporate. And, um, uh, again, try and keep your, you know, your minds open and clear from what you've learned up until this point. Uh, you know, I'll specifically say from Tamware because I don't want you to learn that method, okay? Yeah, that's good for him, but it's not going to be good for you guys. You should be able to do a T4 return like this. Uh, it should be, you know, really a, a half hour situation, right? And so therefore, you should, for T4s, you know, say they're 10 years behind, um, you know, should be able to do it uh, easily within, you know, a few hours, right? And have it complete. And if you're not, so you got to keep 